Hello, welcome back to uh, Let's Build the 200 Subscriber Special. You thought I gave up on it, but I didn't. I've just been <laughs> really busy lately. Um, getting the three videos out a week that I've been doing, it's been a struggle, particularly with Starfleet Academy, but uh, I managed to clear up some time in my schedule for today for this. Uh, so picking up where we last left off, uh, so I had to rebuild the scenario because that update I alluded to finally came out. Um, and I gotta say, I'm not really seeing the difference with the radars right now. Um, oh no, did, oh, okay, I see. I, I, I got concerned for a minute because I know when I originally built it, I had all the aircraft kind of laid out. But, uh, it looks like when I rebuilt it, I just put them all inside the carrier, which is fine. Uh, that's a decent enough starting point. And I reconstituted the Chinese battle groups, moved them around a bit. Um, oops, I'm actually going to close that for a second. I'm at, because I want to get rid of that for now. And let's get rid of that for now, too. I might change my mind on that later. Uh, I did add a couple things. Obviously, we still have our DF-21D batteries there. But I picked out a couple islands, and I believe the, the Parasol Islands are under Chinese control. Uh, this island here, I think, is also... There is an island here, believe me. There we go. I believe this is another one of those uh, Chinese islands. So I put some... Um, some of their most modern anti-ship missile batteries, they're the YJ-12B, uh, which we can see from this, has a pretty good range. Um, here, triple, uh, YJ-12. So this is basically, um, it's a supersonic miss missile. It's got good range. Um, so this should be a challenging opponent for, uh, for the, um, carrier battle group. Uh, likewise, I did make some changes to the Chinese battle group here. Uh, so I still have, I basically made it more like the American battle group. Um, I have the Type 55 cruiser just ahead of the carrier to provide close in defense. I have the supply, uh, well, a supply ship kind of hanging out here. And the protection on all sides is provided by Type 52Ds, because I determined there was enough that they would spare for, for the, uh, battle group, uh, to kind of maximize it. I suppose technically they could, they could also probably fill it with Type 55s, but I imagine I'm still of the opinion that they're going to fill a similar, similar role to the Ticonderogas, so... You know, probably just one with every major battle group or carrier battle group, and then one well, one with every major battle group below that, and then maybe one or two doing independent detached operations. Excuse me. Uh, I didn't focus as much on reconstituting the submarines. I have a couple of Yuan uh, submarines here, I suppose. I'll uh. I suppose I can have a mix. Eh, I don't want a mix. Um, we can have two nuclear Type 95s protecting the uh, the Chinese carrier battle group, but then we can also have a nuclear submarine kind of leading the charge into the American battle group. Um, other than that, everything's pretty pretty much the same. Let's see. What are these? Yeah. So, uh, I have God's Eye tr view turned on, uh, just for <laughs> ease of scenario design. So, yeah, they have two nuke subs, three flight, three Burks supply ship. Oh, I actually need to... Okay. I, uh, I miscreated that. Um... Yeah, so what I'm gonna do shit. Not what I wanted to do. Uh, let me quick switch to the American side here. I guess this might be a little scope creep. I do want to add in. And I'll add the helicopters for that later. Yeah, but I realized I just had. Um, I suppose if I'm gonna match what I already did with the Chinese group, um, 
The cruiser, again, is going to provide close in defense to the carrier, and then I'll have another destroyer out front taking point. Um, probably will make this battle group a little more survivable than two with the extra, you know, 96 missiles or so. Uh, but the big thing today, and the reason I was partially uh, putting off this episode, besides time constraints and energy constraints, was the need to research all the Chinese airfields. And then I realized, oh wait, I don't have to. Because there's a beautiful, beautiful feature in uh, Command Modern Operations and in its predecessor, Command Modern Air Naval Operations. Um, and I believe it's mostly a community contribution or like a mixed effort between the community and the developers. But there's this wonderful import-export units function. Uh, you can save your own groups to file and load units from a file, but um, it comes with a set of pre, like a bunch of preset installations. So what you can do here is if I go under China, I can add all their known SAMs. I, well, I can basically add all Oh, is it not gonna... I think I broke it. Alright, so basically I can add all Chinese installations with a bunch of clicks. Not just one click, unfortunately. Uh, I would... I don't know why checking China wasn't checking all of these. Yeah, see that works, but uh, but I can load these in. And I'm not going to use all of them for sure. Um, but you can see there we go. It just added in every Chinese installation and really, really made the game bog down. And let's see if they've got this island in here. Okay, I guess not. I'm going to re-add it, because... Um, well, let's just wait a bit. Uh, first off... Uh, oh, that's right. I do have this guy here. Um, let's look it up on Google Maps and see if we can spot any aircraft that we could definitively say are Chinese. Okay, so I'm doing this on my second monitor, so that's why you guys don't see anything just yet. Um, uh, I do want to zoom out to get. Okay, so the crescent. And that is kind of south. I think that's what this is. Pratis Islands? Yeah. Dong Shidao Airport is what. what this is apparently and this is actually part of an atoll that shows it a little better um holy shit this image is completely like whited out here i'll move it over here now but just i'm pretty sure this is chinese though um but yeah, it's so whited out and the little patchy things along the runway, which I don't know if that's just random dark spots, because I think Chinese, the Chinese use that like Soviet-style tile runway. Um, so maybe that's just patches coming through, or maybe it could be some sort of jamming attack. Who knows? Um, but we can quickly look up the Dong... Not Dong Pool Restaurant. Dong should. Dow Airport. Oh, it, it, it is Taiwanese. I, well, I guess technically Taiwan is Thai, China, but uh. Huh. Okay, well, I learned something. <laughs> so I'm actually going to delete these batteries then, since that's apparently Taiwanese. this is supposed to be but yeah um 
Oh, these must be, all these lines here, I think, are uh, data links. Oh God, did this deploy all their uh, SAM yeah, bases? I'll have to go through everything and make sure it didn't deploy like uh, duplicate ballistic missile batteries or something, but that's something I can do off screen. The important thing is now we have all these bases to choose from to uh, base our operations off of. And it looks like I was kind of on the nose here. I was right that they had an island here. I just picked the wrong island. Um, okay, there we go. Yep, we can see it clearly now. Woody Island Air... Sh oh, I remember hearing about all the news of that. So we're gonna... We're just gonna switch our... Sam batteries over to Woody Island. Uh, elevation three feet, close enough. I just got to make sure it's in a, it's a positive elevation, otherwise the. Uh, otherwise, the game freaks out that and thinks you're trying to place it like underwater or in the water. There we go. So that should still give them... Yeah, that gives them... It's starting to be the outer portion of the range, but it does still give them the range to uh, hit the carrier battle group. Likewise, I think these guys are just... Oh, they're actually just outside. Hmm. I might have to uh, decide how to handle that. I don't know. I, I guess I can keep them in, but they aren't going to be used. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll relocate them to another set of the Paracel Islands. Uh, basically, though, um, I kind of reformulated the the initial idea of this. Because I think originally I said, okay, the carry group just finished its transit of the Taiwan Strait. And they were shadowed by the Chinese carrier battle group. And now that they're in this open area, they're being attacked by, I think... We're going to kind of take the reverse of that, where the Chinese carrier battle group is the one that just transited the Taiwan Strait. I might move them back a bit more. Um, whereas the American group is going, heading towards the Taiwan Strait to transit it when it gets attacked. Uh, so that, because the Chinese don't want us to do our usual dick waving. Um, so I think that's kind of going to be. Uh, how I set this up instead. I think that makes a little more sense that way. Because otherwise we're already steaming away and we just keep going full pour until we get out of the combat zone. Uh, whereas this, we're actively sailing into the combat zone, essentially. So... Alright, what else? Oh yeah, aircraft. So, obviously the big thing is... Um, what to do um so i'm going to use a multitude of bases and i don't know what um i don't know what the traditional units are that are stationed at these bases i'm just kind of picking randomly here so this scenario is going to be a little perhaps unrealistic in that regard but, uh, yeah, this looks like a big, juicy, but basically my, uh, oh, I oh, can't even see anything there. Uh, but basically the idea is going to be, wow, this really like with all those, uh, Chinese Sam's, uh, being added. Oh, and there's still so much left to do. Let's try this one. Basically, I'm looking for one base further inland that's going to handle launching most of, like, the heavier and longer range aircraft. You know, like the bombers, uh, the bigger electronic warfare, um, uh, programs. 
Okay, so that's an international airport that's also used as a base. I, I want a dedicated airfield. But, um... Uh, I think these are maybe duplicates? No? I don't know. Uh, I guess I'll have to figure that out. There we go. This looks like it could be, uh... Airfield 55 units. The nice thing about this, too, is they're all... Oh, I gotta bring up the group menu here. They're all, uh... Like, instead of using single-unit airfields, all these airfields are crafted out, which I really appreciate. Um... Is it under unit orders? I know the hotkey, I just... Wait, isn't there a group operation sub? Formation editor, there we go. Um, very large aircraft, 10,000 foot run, 3,200 meter runway. That should be long enough, I would think. Uh, so we're gonna start our aircraft allocation here. Um, I'm gonna be placing them uh, just because I don't wanna come up with uh, call signs for them just yet. But we're going to start with, uh, we're just going to set this to China for the time being. And we're going to start with, uh, actually, I love this, that we can do this now. Uh, we can just set it to bomber. Though, so, unfortunately, they aren't still using the Beagle bombers. That would be a lucky break for us, I suppose, but they're not that desperate. So we'll be using the two newest variants. So there's going to be these Badger Gods, this God of War Badger variant, which um, I got to look into what these loadouts are. For now, I'll just put them in Ferry. But basically, I'm thinking... Um, we'll say, well, we'll say 18 of those, um, and then another six of their badgers that can, uh, carry those air-launched ballistic missiles. Uh, oh, one's hypothetical. This one isn't, so... What's the difference? Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see here. Looks like the same sensor setup. Same countermeasure setup. Oh, the difference is this one has a hypersonic drone. Which I'm not interested in. Uh, so we'll just take this and these would obviously be using this loadout <laughs> no research needed there so we have 24 bombers which uh, just again I'm just going off of Wikipedia here um, which we can see just looking at People's Liberation Army Air Force they have over 176 and then there's going to be more than that because um, there's the People's Liberation Army Navy Air Force um, should be in here ba -ba -ba -ba. organization equipment aircraft yeah People's Liberation Army Naval Air Force which sort by roll yeah they have another 30 so they so China roughly has roughly 200 of these bombers so using my 10% rule for this scenario 24 is roughly 10% of 200 so that's what they'll be getting um, I will also be adding I don't think they'll need tankers for this. I'll obviously trial it, uh, the scenario at some point, and add them if needed. But otherwise, if we look at uh, 
Let's see what they have for electronic warfare. I think most of it is, uh, yeah, most of it is these cubs, which are kind of like uh, C-130s in that sense. Uh, so it's kind of like the Air Force's combat scent compass call, etc., whatever. I forget which special variant was the electronic warfare variant, but that's their big one. Um, otherwise, they do they are starting to make uh, variants based off of the J-15 and J-16, uh, much like we made the Growler out of the Hornet, or the Super Hornet specifically. And uh, you can see that here, but for here, um, let's see how many they have. So this is just the Y9G. Uh, so they have 17. So I think two um, would basically be uh, that. 10%. So that's what we will do. Obviously, that's going to be offensive ECM. And then I think the only other large frame support aircraft might be. Uh... Well, let's see what else they have in the database. So, uh, da, 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 da. bomber, dark warfare. Uh, obviously, airborne early warning, which is going to be another Y8J. Um, take a look at that. Okay, it doesn't come with a picture, but uh. Oh, well, that's not even their newest one. Let's see. They have the mock <laughs> I, I love that name. The mock -Eye. Um. Yeah, they have this KJ-500. Which it looks like... They have 14 of those. So again, I would probably allocate two to this operation. And then if we look at what else they have for large frame aircraft. Um, airborne command post. Ah, this could be useful, but honestly, I think this is just another target to soak up the attack, so I don't think there's much use for that in this scenario, because you can't... I, I think a lot of this is going to be um, done from the ground, and I think the AWACSs will probably have jurisdiction over their local areas. So it could be like a coordination platform, but in the scenario, taking it out isn't going to affect the AI's coordination. So I guess I don't see the point in using it let's see we do have area surveillance which uh, this is probably a drone uh, da -da -da. piston yeah um no it's not a drone it's got a crew too but Oh, these are all generics. Um, this is well, it's fairly recent. Non-imaging infrared line scheme. Huh. Never heard of that before. But apparently it's pretty old tech if it's been used since the 80s. Uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, I don't think... This is quite what we're looking for here. Um, let's see, they have Recon. Ooh, they have Elint. Uh, let's sort by new AS-350. I think that's a helicopter. 
JZ8. That's like a MiG-21 uh, variant. I don't think they'll be flying photographs over us. Of anything, I would probably just go with one of these T-154. Huh. Yeah, so probably just uh, one of these, because I don't think they have many of these. Which is just going to be like another intelligence platform for the Chinese in this case. On top of, you know, all the AWACS and stuff. So, in a sense, it's kind of redundant. Uh, Sigint, nothing. Transport cargo, commercial utility, naval utility. Eh. Take your training target. Otherwise, the only other thing I would think would be uh, UAVs, which... Oh, we can give them a couple of those. Generic Sigint. Which, uh... Yeah, we could probably throw a couple of these in. The Wing Mung. They won't need a... How many of these do they have? Let's see here. Um, I'm at aircraft, AWACS, Electron. They don't say in this list that's really, uh... Oh, for a more comprehensive list. Okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Helicopter, trainer, UAV, here we go. Uh, so they have 60 of the pterodactyls. And, uh... Well, they have, sorry, they have 60 pterodactyl 1s, 75 pterodactyl 2s, uh, 84 giant eagles, 12 cloud shadows, and 8 sword dragons. So they would probably get one sword dragon. And then maybe four, uh... Uh, four of the... Aerodactyls. You are sad. Or sad. Yeah. Oh, this must be... This must be the Pterodactyl 1, which I believe couldn't carry weapons. So they have a separate UCAV category, where I expect to see... Oh, here. Elan UCAV. Except it doesn't... Unless it's potted? Nope. Uh, oh, GJ2 Wing Long. Probably. So, Wing Long, I said they had. What's its other name? A Wing Long 2. Is that just Pterodactyl 2? Nope. Yes. So, they have 75 in total. So they would probably just have, uh, and as far as weapons, oh, it doesn't carry any. Okay, so this one should carry them. I guess that's misclassified then. It should be in the other wrong category. Yep, anti-tank guided missiles. None of them are really long-range weapons, though. They have basically uh, GPS bombs and ATGMs, which isn't really that long of range. Um, so I think I'm going to opt out of actually providing 
locals to the Chinese, because I think they, there's better uses for them than ships. They'd either get shot down before they got there, in which case they're just uh, basically really expensive cannon fodder, or they do get there, but if they're that close, the ships are probably out of missiles and munitions by that point. So again, is there really a need to get that close if you've exhausted them that much? Or did you send a mi missile instead, instead of sending a tiny missile on a really expensive plane? So, um, I think we're gonna opt out of that. And I think that's, this is all the large aircraft. Now, with this H6K, uh, if we look at the loadouts, okay. So, okay, so they'll, they'll be carrying this YJ-63, since apparently the CJ-10A is only uh, usable against land targets. So we have 18 times 4. So that's 72 cruise missiles just from these guys. Plus, I think these guys each ca they carry 6 ballistic missiles in total. And then we have the two batteries of the F-21s that are going to carry um yeah they have four each so they're gonna have a total of eight so that's 14 ballistic missiles alone that are probably gonna chew up a fair bit of uh um munitions and then obviously we're looking at what what did i say uh 72 cruise missiles just from that there's going to be, each of these uh, SSM batteries has 12. So that's what, 12, 24, 36 from this. So what, we're up to over 100 cruise missiles now. These Hobeys carry eight each, Jesus. So eight times eight is 64. So that's another 64. Uh, Jing Dao. This guy's got another four. So combined, just these two small attack groups alone has 136 missiles. So with the badgers, that's we're up to over 200. So we're at about 230 plus <laughs> whatever they carry on their submarines, plus whatever they end up carrying in the battle group which uh, looks like it might be up to another 64. So we're going to be looking at trying to defend from like 500 missiles here, probably once all is said and done. So it'll be interesting to see if that happens. Uh, something else I'm going to do before I forget is... Um, I'm going to throw in satellites, too, since, you know, they're going to be there. And the Chinese purportedly claim that, uh, be, that these satellites are instrumental for them to um, track carrier battle groups and guide the DF-21s, so. What I can do here is just, let's see, where are they? There they are. Uh, can I just select China? I don't know if I can, but uh, let's zoom out and see if I think that worked because I don't remember this grid going off of. Uh, Maybe it didn't. I don't remember the grid going off the planet, but I also don't see the satellites, so maybe it didn't work. Um, let's see. Nope, it just drills down. Um... Can 
I batch add these? I can. Okay, I saw those enter in. But we'll add their Elint satellites, which are all the Yaogin ones. Oh god, there's so many. Long March, these are the guys that are supposed to... Crack, right? Already deorbited. Okay, so I can ignore those. Galfen, are these supposed to be... I don't know what remote sensing that might be. What they want. Uh, the scenario's gonna... Hey, there's one right... Like, right in the area of operations, so... Okay, Massant. Two optical, one synthetic aperture radar. Some optical. I can't wait to run this and see, like, just from a starting point, how much they're able to see of the carrier battle group. Alright, most of these are going to be in coverage areas that don't matter for us, I think, but... And they have these SIGINT ones. There we go. So that's all the uh, Chinese satellites. It looks like the ones immediately in our area of operations is there's going to be an imagery satellite and another... Yeah, some imagery satellites, so whether they can provide the, um, the, the actual targeting data for the DF-21, we'll see. Uh, on that same token, though, we can, uh, yeah, they're, you're, they're not going to see it now because the scenario needs to take over and update, but we can go to the United States... Navy here. We're, I'm just going to add the same stuff here, which is going to take forever because we have a shit ton of satellites. Which, again, I don't think most of these are going to matter for this mission, but this might give our uh, commanders out there a very early idea of what's to come uh, when the scenario starts. Evil Block 4. Yeah, there's just so, so many satellite. Ooh, Sivir Space Base Infrared System. That'll probably help detect some of those ballistic missile launches, which... As... So, this game's gonna be a little unrealistic in that sense. In that we can... We'll immediately have that data on hand. Whereas, in reality... I think some... That's gonna first be seen, obviously, by the Space Base Infrared System... Uh, that's going to be first seen by whatever technician is in charge of that. Then it's good. He's going to pass it on to his higher up. Who's going to pass it on to like an air force general, who then has to pass it on to a naval attaché, which then has to pass it on to the combatant command, or like the naval fleet commander, who can then finally pass it down to. Uh, <laughs> to the, um, the actual head of the battle group, so, or at least that's, that's what I would imagine, it's quite a chain, uh, interesting, so it looks like, unless there's some, nope, these are all in low earth orbit, so, <laughs> that's funny that the Chinese satellites are gonna happen to be overhead during our scenario, 
but at least for the moment, when the scenario starts, all the American satellites, there's like no satellites in the South China Sea. Of our gajillion satellites. I mean, some will eventually be. Um, I think the orbital period for these is pretty short, I want to say. I, I think some can be as... I want to say, I don't know off the top of my head, but I want to say some can be as little as like 90 minute orbital periods, which is going to be about probably how long it'll take for the Chinese to actually set up their attack in this scenario. But, uh, so at least there they'll be on even ground and, uh, this episode's kind of going a bit long, so I think we're going to cut it today, and we'll come back another day. And um, we got our big frame aircraft. The things that we have left to do for, like, big scenario equipment allocation is um, get all the tactical aircraft for the Chinese, which is basically just going to be a lot of flanker knockoffs, vigorous dragons. Um, oh, they had another one. What was that small one? Uh, there's an attack aircraft Harbin, I think. Uh, oops, sorry, Flying Leopard. Um, attack aircraft. And um, and obviously helicopters for all these ships. Well, not all these. I mean, you know, it's mostly just going to be the destroyers in the Chinese carrier battle group. The Chinese carrier itself... And then the uh, frigates that are leading. Oh, it even added oil platforms. Okay. Uh, I don't need to know that. <laughs> That's not... I mean, yeah, hitting those would be uh, strategically a good thing um, for the battle group to do. But I don't think they're going to waste missiles on that when they could potentially use them to hit at the sites that are attacking them. Survival first, you know. I, I wouldn't trade a carrier battle group for some oil terminals. But, um... But yeah, so we, there's all the tactical aircraft to be added. Um, and then we can... At that point, we can start getting into the nitty-gritty of fitting out uh, the U.S. warships, uh, VLS systems, and making our knockoff uh, large surface combatant out of that Flight 3 Burke. Um... Unless they added it with a database update, which I don't think they did. I'll check real quick. Uh, hypothetical country, United States. CG21 was canceled. Uh, Virginia with a VLS refit. Interesting. Oh, this is that upcoming class, isn't it? Maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't... It's just the CG-21, which... I could use that for a stand-in, but because that was going to be closer and designed to the zoom wall, I think it would be too uh, not stealthy. I was kind of disappointed to learn they were using the Mark 41s instead of the Mark 57s. Because the Mark 57s actually allow for 20% um, greater exhaust throughput, if I remember correctly. So they can handle more powerful engines. And I think they are a little deeper than the typical Mark 41. Or a little wider or something. Obviously, they're backwards compatible with all the Mark 41 missiles. But, uh... Oh, well. I, I guess I'm not the paid expert here uh, as far as designing the United States combat fleet, but um, a little disappointing. Uh, as far as tactical aircraft, we'll probably station them along the coastline and here um, in the Paracel Islands. And then, of course, on the Chinese carrier. Um, yeah, we'll decide the U.S. VLS cell loadouts. I think the Chinese ships are predetermined for the most part. Um, 
Okay, those are countermeasures. Okay, so they have a predetermined loadout. I mean, technically the U.S. does too. Um, but especially with this, I'd be curious. Yeah, like this is 60 if I got my numbers right. And they have 64 cells, so um, probably ch tweak the Chinese cruiser a bit. But other than that, it's probably a decent loadout. It looks focused on air defense, which is reasonable. They've got plenty of other ships for uh, attack operations. Um, so they don't need to go full bore on any ship weapons. Excuse me. Um, whereas the US, I think they are, they do start pretty full, but they're, yeah. But they're front loaded with you can see they're mostly tomahawks, then some quad packed sea sparrows, some SM Block 6, a very small amount, and then um, a fair bit of uh, anti submarine rockets actually. Yeah, even their forward cell is just tomahawks and ESSM, so uh, these I'm gonna retweak on the uh, Burks at least well on all of them but with this like it's gonna be more heavily focused on air defense with secondary standoff um, capabilities um, or attack capabilities since like because th that default loadout is like what I would carry in for like if I was gonna go bomb Syria because they aren't gonna pose much of an anti-ship threat, so I may as well just stock up on, you know, land attack missiles. Because God knows we fire a destroyer's worth in one volley. But for, like, a near-peer conflict, that's going to be a no-go. But, um... But, yeah, I think then once we get those loadouts picked out, then it's a matter of just making the uh, final placements for everything. And, um and basically developing the uh, the in-game missions with the mission editor here uh, so that way everyone can act autonomous autonomously because my goal is to basically create like this hands-off scenario where I hit play and the AI will automatically direct everyone to do their thing and it will just play out and we can watch it on tack view that's the goal. Maybe it's a little ambitious for my first real scenario in this game, but uh, we'll get there. And anyways, like I said, in the meantime, I think like most of these Chinese bases, I'm going to probably end up deleting once I pick out the ones I want. Um, some of the coastal installations, particularly Sam's, I'll keep around because we're uh, um, because they can disrupt our operations in this area, particularly aircraft operations, if they get too close. But otherwise, like, we're not going to be flying Hornets over northern China. We don't need, like, this. We don't need all that. In fact, I'd even be so bold as to say... I just want to make sure I don't have any satellites in the path. Uh... Like, these are over-the-horizon radars and stuff, which I think are mostly for, like, maybe ballistic missile defense or something, or air defense. But, again, we're not... We're not going that far north. Uh... Oh, it's... Because I imported them as a group, I think it's basically saying... I think it's... Oh, whatever. Anyways, I'll, I'll deal with that off-screen, uh, at the very least. Like, all this stuff. Yeah, it's a much smaller group. No satellites. There we go, that's... That's progress. Anyways, um, 
But yeah, I'll do that, and then hopefully, sometime this year, this thing will actually be ready. Of course, with my luck, I'll probably have uh, 300 subscribers before uh, this scenario is ready, but we're making progress. I mean, we're already... I think we're already further along than I ever was with that try at the 100 subscriber scenario, so... So with that, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for next time, and stay safe out there, and we'll see you then.